It will be. You know what I notice in your chat room, Jesse, a lot of people are saying, when is this um, magnetic ball, ball of energy and so forth, these things, when will we see them? I can tell you all this. The sky colors will change preceding them. You, they, they won't surprise you if you stay, if, if you just notice the sky colors, the auroras in the sky, and they won't be due to a solar flare. Remember that. But the skies will change colors. Certainly at sunset, we're going to see it. Beautiful sky, different colors of purples and the greens and so forth. Then you'll know. Let that be your marker. You'll know. That, well, Michael, on the physically, we talked about infrared, and we talked about this uh, ball of energy uh, interfering with the magnetic line of force around the Earth. And in a way, that magnetic energy is in the infrared spectrum. Uh, yeah. In a sense, if, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and uh, because and you know when you see heat rise off a highway, how it's wavy, you don't really see it; you just see the effects. Right. Will that will that interference in the visible spectrum spectrum be the cause of these color changes, or will it be something else? No, it'll be the um, um, well that and something else. Imagine our magnetosphere. Uh, capturing energy from the sun, polarize to capture the solar winds, right. and then <clears throat> if it continues to be polarized to capture those solar winds, of course it's going to go up in energy, causing these different lights to show. You'll also know, uh, preceding the changing in the sky, and actually preceding and post. Pay attention to the thunderstorms that are coming. Pay attention because they will be 10 times, 10 to 50 times more powerful than any other electrical storms we've had. Because, because the energy, that's right, the energy in our atmosphere will increase greatly. These objects um, will transfer energy from our planet back to them and so forth. All the planets do it anyway. We don't see any visual effects because it's, it's at such a small scale. But if something got really close to us, say uh, twice the distance as the moon, twice the distance, and it was large enough uh, and dense enough, we would see that electrical transfer. And that would happen in our atmosphere, and you would certainly notice it in thunderstorms that are at least 50 times more powerful than the ones we've been seeing. Well, I've seen the flights where they're going up, uh, different scientists and groups from NASA observing these sprites, and, and it talks about a transfer of energy from the upper to the lower atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and it even talks about frequency, Michael. Yes. Well, everything... Uh, Everything has its own frequency. Everything has its own resonance. And if something interferes with that resonance, you can effectively change um, matter itself. This is ultimately one of the goals of many uh, science, scientists around the world, uh, certainly the military-industrial complex. And, but the sad part is they have done it. They have devices. They have propulsion methods that are at least 500 years beyond what people know of right now. They have done it. Somewhere sitting in, uh, you know, hangar bays with Lockheed Martin and uh, all these other uh, subcontracted companies is a vessel of some type that has accomplished what people think is fantasy. Like an interdimensional vehicle or just super high speed? or? Well, <clears throat> some of these um, traveling balls of light that people see or the large... Uh, triangle-shaped craft, most of those are ours. They're not UFOs. They're vehicles that we made. 